This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. The Foundation with Hard Grant is brought to you by Alive, Baja Retreat and Spa, Davinia Spices, Commonwealth Bank, J.S. Johnson, Marcos Pizza, Mobile Garage Technologies, Platinum Pastries, Rev Bahamas, and Ross Electric Motors. The aftermath of every social revolution brings about change. Cultural norms and landmarks shift as our minds and hearts expand beyond the familiar. To everything, there is a season and a time to end the land of the living. This is our time to renew, revive, and restore the hope lost to the busyness of life. This is our time to dig again and rebuild from the storms of our past on a solid footing that holds. Welcome to the foundation. The foundation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, the foundation with Howard Grant on this absolutely gorgeous lover's day. Are you, are you clad in all your red? Is that what you're doing? Right? <laughs> Did your girlfriend say, put this on, shut up and put it on, right? Did she tell you that? What you did? <laughs> Well, I definitely have on my red today. Put on a red undershirt. My wife said, why don't you just put on everything red? Why don't you just do that, right? So <laughs> it's in commemoration for a day that we identify. I almost feel like, you know, we're kindred souls now. We can walk past each other and give a little smile today. Why? Because we all know that we're the lovers out here. All right? So all you wearing dark black, deep black, no lipstick having today, you're mad, you're angry. Whatever your issue is, we pray for you. And pray that St. Valentine to. <laughs> We'll deal with you today. It's a beautiful day. And for all of you out there who send flowers to yourself, uh, we say happy Valentine's. For all of you out there who haven't gotten any flowers, but you still have a great deal of love in your heart, we say happy Valentine's to you. We know that we don't necessarily commemorate or identify this time to be able to jump aboard the mass commercialism that exists out there. But we want to be able to sort of spur and trouble the water of this kind of stagnant inability to kind of communicate locally. I just want to, you know what it is? Like for me, we keep talking about community. We keep talking about this sort of revival, chivalry and all these things. I think it starts with small things like this. Just a little small thing. You dress up, uh, get one of the teddy bear for your sweet thing in the can and do something nice. And I just want to do it. So happy Valentine's to my wife, right? To the love of my life. Happy Valentine's Day to her. We never really celebrated it. We have Valentine's every single day. I always cutting up with her. It's, you could tell by all the children I have. Praise God for me. Amen. Right. So, <laughs> all right. But so we always celebrate uh, Valentine's. Uh, but this day, a special day that all persons want to be able to identify, we say happy Valentine's. And in the spirit of Valentine's, we wanted to be able to extend the conversation. Yesterday, we had a conversation with uh, Kendra Bow. And um, for me, I thought it was a magnanimous, I thought it was just a marvelous conversation. It really got uh, deep into this concept and idea of love, uh, the intricacy thereof from a feminine perspective, right? Today, we wanted to take on masculinity. Now, before I get into that and introduce my guest that I have all the way from Grenada, I wanted to be able to say to you that I have set some time aside. And, uh, you know, maybe there was a kind of conflict of interest in terms of being able to speak about it today. But I wanted to give my guy, Dario Torelli, significant time to have uh, a longer conversation with me on air about Bear Fest. I know you want to hear more about Bear Fest. You're excited right now. You're trying to figure out what? Bear Fest? Yes. So they're going to be doing Bear Fest. It's going to be coming up in March, and they're going to talk about it this Friday, Light Friday, that we take to kind of dive into those things. So Friday, we're going to hear more from Dario Torelli and the Bear Fest Committee and those persons to talk to us about what they're going to be doing with the Bear Fest when it comes up um, uh, coming in March. So I look forward to that this Friday, God Spare, and being able to chop that down with you. So I wanted to thank you for being able to do that. And I want to thank the persons for being able to sponsor us. Uh, you know, I want to do that. I want to thank the persons that remain committed to kind of being able to, you know, they call me up and they say, Howard, we want to sponsor now. Howard, look here, I sponsor your show, right? <laughs> okay, thank you, right? Howard, now look here, I sponsor your show. 
and I just want to thank them. I, I really do. I want to thank all those persons who've made commitments uh, in any way to be able to do that. More specifically, I really wanted to thank the persons over at Mo Mobile Garage. Uh, the found, uh, We want to be able to do that. Yesterday, I should have read this, but I was Mo Mobile Garage Fleet software giveaway read. It says that our treat, your fleet, uh, giving away is here for the entire Valentine's week. Enter into our raffle to win one year's fleet management software services inclusive of short GPS, smart GPS devices, and artificial intelligence for dash cams. Simple, simply WhatsApp a photo of your fleet to 422-4575 and tell us how your business can benefit from the fleet management software and fleet devices. For more information, visit mobilegaragefleets.com. Now, let me just drive that in, uh, drive that home again for you guys. Simply WhatsApp a photo of your fleet or your cars that you have to 422-4575 and tell them how your business can benefit from our fleet management fleet devices. For more information, like I said, please visit us at mobilegaragefleets.com. And that's just what it is. We take the time out to thank the persons that remain committed to being able to do some work with us as we move forward and really expand what you do. To get your service, like we always say, especially on Small Business Thursdays, we always say we want to get your services off your shelf and your product, your products off yourself and your services in their hearts to know sort of the experience that you offer. So we want to thank Mobile Garage Fleets for being able to do that and thank all those persons that continue to be able to sponsor us. If you want to be a part of the sponsorship as we continue to be able to move forward, please give us a call at 827-0111. You'll get Howard Grant right away. That's my Help Me Howard line, 827-0111. Or you can call us here at the studio, 302-2300, 3023 Zero, zero. Anyone would be more than happy to assist you to get your information out there, craft something for you. You heard some good stuff that we've done. Everyone has been very satisfied with uh, the commercials that we've created for them, um, uh, sometimes overnight, just to be able to get your stuff in there. So we're here to do that. Well, guys, uh, on Lover's Day, uh, as we continue to shift gears and talk about it, on Lover's Day, uh, I wanted to have a conversation about masculinity. Not a typical conversation that you can be able to kind of dive into and say, well, well, he did this or she did that. And I remember one time, and whilst I love those conversations, they're great for popcorn and, um, uh, you know, time to ourselves. I just wanted to kind of embark just a few, by just a few octaves, right? And rather than this idea of regurgitation and finger pointing to identify the sexes that, uh, where the inflections come from in the relationship, I wanted to take it a little higher. Uh, to think about from a scientific perspective, from a clinical therapist, uh, psychotherapist perspective, I wanted to raise it a few notches, a little bit higher, so there can be a sense of introspection. Now, I scoured, uh, we've had, you know, great conversations with those persons that are here locally and who dive into these conversations. You know, uh, a great deal of my friends come up and over the years we've been talking with them. I wanted to get sort of a snapshot of who we are as black men, not from a local perspective, because, you know, that'll kind of bleed into culture, but from sort of a regional perspective. And so what I did is I went to particular persons, I had this sort of an idea framed of what I wanted and who I wanted to speak with. And, uh, you know, my decent LinkedIn connected me with a man that I want to be able to tell you about. Um, he's an amazing man in terms of what he's done and his contribution, uh, both in the Caribbean here and, and in the United States of America, being able to do some stuff. And I want to be able to read a, for, a few things for you. His name is Dr. Augustine Panchu, Dr. Augustine Panchu. Uh, he's a clinical uh, psychologist, uh, psychologist, a clinical psychologist from the University of Boston and the Chicago School of Professional Psychology at Westwood. And he's all the way from St. George, Grenada, and talking to us about this particular perspective. Today, we're going to talk more specifically about the past, present, and future. We kind of set it up, uh, an outline for what we're going to talk about. And the past, present, and future, the concept is to be able to talk about where we were and travel back to the inception of the strength of where we were. Tomorrow is sort of a diverse conversation with both black men and women. So it's black excellence tomorrow. Today is just black masculinity, right? We wanted to travel back to the inception of where this all started. Where did we lose that strength that we had, that we carried, that was trapped in our DNA? 
where did we trade it off for this, this perpetual genuflecting? This kind of an idea of yielding our strength for the hopes of survival for crumbs. Where did we go wrong? Did we go wrong? And if so, can we get back on course to this idea of vision and growth for the country? Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to introduce you to Dr. Pancho, let him see uh, one or two words about himself, and we want to dive in. Dr. Pancho, I thank you so very kindly, my brother, for taking on this task, for being able to accept the call, and being able to, to reach out and really dive into the conversation today. How are you today? I am doing great. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much for this singular opportunity to be able to join you in this program. Um, you know, when you contacted me, I started to look because I didn't know about you before. And mm -hmm. certainly, I, I don't think you knew about me either. No, no, no. We, uh, I found you, though. <laughs> <laughs> so our paths really crossed um, out, of a, out, of, out of a need, right? Yes. Necessity is the mother of all inventions. And then it set you looking. And, and you so you found me on LinkedIn. And, and I am on Facebook. So you did find me. And I'm, I am glad. I am currently in Grenada. Currently, I travel between... California, USA, and uh, and Grenada. I'm a clinical psychologist by profession and by training. Um, also, in addition to doing clinical work, working with a vast array of of uh, you know, um, who need psychological help. I also have the distinct honor and privilege to have taught and currently teach for a couple of universities um, in the United States, and uh, so. It's a pleasure to be able to join with you. I think the conversation that we're going to um, engage in this evening and this afternoon is is really a relevant one, especially today being um, designated by the world as, as Valentine's Day, a lover's day. And, you know, um, uh, men... Uh, uh, play a really great part in in the whole sphere of love mm -hmm. and giving of love and and loving. So um, I look forward to the conversation. I am trusting that some of our listeners may chime in with 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 questions or concerns or maybe even a different version of what we might talk about. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Um, I'm grateful, and, and I'm beaming from Grenada. I'm so, grateful that. So you... hopefully the internet. Um, We'll stay on. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you, you should be good, right? You sound clear right now. Now, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm really uh, ecstatic that you've taken on this task. I really am. And I'm grateful that you've done this because I wanted to be able to expand. You know, sometimes, uh, I don't know if you have this in Grenada, uh, but there's this uh, subconscious, almost knee jerk effect where if there's indifference socially, if there is issues that we come by, you know, people will just automatically say, boy, Bahamians could do this, boy, Bahamians can do that. And that is because I believe that we're locked in this space. And we're, so how we travail on a day-to-day -day basis, we tend to look at some of the indifference and some of, some of the things that happen here. But I wanted to get sort of a wider thing that's happening. When we talk about slavery, when we talk about coming into independence, trying to find our strength again, but knowing where we come from, I think uh, as black men, uh, men more specifically, we have gone through a great deal of tribulation, of mental turmoil, of, uh, you know, sort of anguish that has sort of locked into jet progressive generations. Uh, you know, our children carry some of the things that their fathers and our grandfathers carry, and which doesn't lead to the sort of progression and the idea of growth that we know that exists in us. And so I wanted to talk about that. Mm -hmm. How can we find, uh, as black men, first and foremost, tell me a little bit more about clinical psychology and what you do, and then really break down how we can find some of the trauma uh, in black men and be able to unravel it to find them moving towards growth. Okay, um, thank you. Um, as a clinical psychologist, I, I deal with the... the the human mind. Um, so I often tell tell people, conceptualize what I do. I I I help people to find the answers they're looking for um, in 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 where they behave and how they conceptualize 
um, the action. So in other words, why do you do what you do? That's basically um, what I try to do most of the times. Now, getting me to help them understand why they do what they do um, may, may allow me to, to do assessments and, and forensic evaluations, whether it is cognitive testing or psychological testing or personality testing. Um, so these are aids that I use to help people to to zero in and to zone in on finding answers for their behaviors. Um, what is going on in your mind? Uh, you think that way, how did you feel about it? And uh, now that you have made a decision, um, how do you feel about the decision? Could we have done something differently? Uh, could we have said something differently? Could we have uh, felt differently? So part of who I am, what I have done, and what I'm doing is to help people find themselves basis for the behaviors. And, and so we are going to tie that in this evening to, to masculinity and maleness, um, an understanding of the, of, of the male species um, in, 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 in this world and, and finding significance, especially in context. And we are going to put in context this evening, um, oh, the, the 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 what I refer to as the generational abuse of of the black male, and 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 I think we're so you cannot talk about masculinity unless you you go back to to Africa as it were, where you go back to the genesis of of the abuse and the trauma that our our foreparents um, endured. Um, in coming to the Caribbean and, 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 and North America. So we are going to put all of that in perspective this this, this afternoon. And, and I thank you for this opportunity. Okay, that's no problem. Well, I'd like to know about it. Now, something stood out to me as you, as you, as you talked, right? The generational abuse of the black man. Let's put it into the perspective. Yes. Um, now, whilst we look at what exists as it relates to platonic relationships now, heterosexual relationships now, relationships that yield uh, productivity of sorts uh, within our community. Uh, we look at it and we see from an older person of what relationships, how it existed uh, in yesteryear, they would look at the relationship and say, there's some things off. This is not the way that we've done things. Why are you doing this like this? And so I want to know, how have we gotten to this point? We talk about Africa, we talk about uh, sort of the abuse that has been visited upon our forefathers uh, in generations before. Has that traveled with us from a mental perspective? Has that locked into our hearts and our minds and this is the way that we, this is the reason why we treat our women or our communities or the way that we act? Talk to me about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so let's 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 really let's really start from the beginning, okay? Um, you know, I am going to reference a couple people that have done significant amount of research, um, collecting data and looking at 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 at, at the African male and his masculinity. Um, you know, there is something there is something called post-traumatic stress disorder, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. PTSD. And that is that is the, the, the stress and trauma that we experience from an event that is unsettling, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're a victim of, of rape, incest, you witness a horrific crime, you were driving, you had a terrible accident, and then you develop symptomatologies that remind you of, of that incident and even years after, okay? And and so we, we, you know, maybe it might be accompanied by sleeplessness, a change in appetite, teary-eyed, um, flashbacks, uh, nightmares, and all of that. And then we see now we conclude that if you suffer with enough symptoms, then you probably are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. But um, there is something called post-traumatic slave syndrome. So it's it's PTSS, not PTSD. Post-traumatic slave syndrome. And I want to reference 
um, a very well world renowned um, researcher by the name of Dr. Joy Digori. Joy Digori um, works in Los Angeles and has been working with the, the black males, African American males, and especially looking at 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 um, males descending from 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 Africa, and what she has documented in in the most profound and awesome way I call it is how the effects of slavery and the middle passage and the bearing away of young boys from the arms of their parents and loved ones and in and disrupting the safety of their lives and 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 taking this you know this horrible terrible um journey to 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 Af uh, to to the united states to north america and the caribbean what it has done it has changed really and truly the genetic makeup and how would we are on to something this evening mm -hmm. it has changed the the gene the genome um, and it's intergenerational. And one of the things you have to remember too is that during the, 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 the period of slavery and, and subsequently um, even what we call emancipation, et cetera, and free slaves and all of that, mm -hmm. um, there, was, there was no treatment for the trauma that these young men and families um, endured. There was, there was no counselor, no therapist, no psychologist to help them to to deal with this, 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 this. And so they had no way of healing or psychologically. And so this is what she writes. And, 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 you know, there are other people, you know, who have come on and latched on to her writings and continue to do research and to, and to, uh, explore areas where PTSS, post-traumatic slave syndrome, continues to plague the black, the males and male and, and African-American families to this day, both in North America and in the Caribbean. Mm. You know, we got to find out more. I'm going to pick up her book, uh, definitely. Joy, you said Joy... Degory? Degory. D-E-G-U-R-Y. G-U-R-Y. Okay. Yes. We're going to be able uh -huh. to pick up a book and find out more because what we suffer... Now, I want to talk like this. Uh, you know, my conversations uh, float back to the principles that I've ingested over the years. And some of those principles, yeah. most of those principles exist within the Word of God, right? And so when I hear this, and when we hear about what uh, the post-traumatic slave disorder and how the next generation has been shifted. You started to talk more specifically about uh, being able to shift the genetics of who we are, right? The yeah. entire the entire trajectory of the call on our life, our purpose and existence has been shifted as a result of what has happened 400 years ago, as a result of what has happened, you know, years ago. And we, um, um, the the this current generation, continues to suffer from these things and we see it in our relationships we see it in our finance we see it in our community we see it in this concept of black crab syndrome we see it in in, in this idea of not being able to grow and expand we see it in our perpetual servitude to be able to yield our strength and our economics to the white man to the feet of the white man we continue to be able to see these things how can we fix this there is a very clear understanding for us that there is an issue. How can we fix this uh, to be able to get to the next level? Well, Howard, just before we we talk about fixing it and and put a put a point on that that question because I think this is the this is where we want to focus a lot of our energy and discussion in on how do we fix. So let me let me just point that how do we fix? Uh, okay, I I think it's pertinent for me to just continue to to help us to. To, to build a case for the devastating effects of slavery and the intergenerational curse that has that has that 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 plagues the the black man the the, the, the and 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 it 
this is the kind of masculinity that we want to talk about. So before we talk about how we're fixing it, let's let's make it a little more foundational and let's talk a little more. Because, because <laughs> interestingly, yeah, in 1851, there is a there is a guy, uh, a doctor, a doctor um Cartwright. I, yeah, that's his name, Dr. Cartwright. In 1851, he diagnosed the black male, the African-American male, or the, the African male on the sugar plantation with a mental illness. He calls it drapetomia, D-R-A-P-E-T-O-M-I-A. Now, <laughs> you, you know, years ago, I, I researched that, so I remember it kind of kind of vividly mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But he calls drapetomia a mental illness, and here is what he says about it. He says that slavery was a better place for the African male than their, than their home life, okay? And you had to be mentally ill, drepetomia, to want to run away, Okay. No, no, no. People, people listening may not even no, this, this understand heavy what the, Yes, they may the true implication of what what this means. You know, his 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 thesis was that slavery was a better place for the African male, because in his mind, of course, he was Caucasian. So in his mind, he placed the entire black species, the black race, at a certain at a certain level of thinking and processing. And he said that you had to be mentally ill, not well in the mind, that's what mental illness is, mm -hmm. to want to run away. Because during slavery, remember that, 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 that you had many, many slaves running away. And I was listening to, you know, to your, to the previous program, to this one, talking about the Underground Railroad, etc. Mm -hmm. It's really slaves on the plantation finding their way out to their freedom. And so when you understand people's concept about the black male, it takes yourself and we need to, Howard, we need to ask ourselves, so what was happening in the families and in the life of the African when he was plucked away from Ghana and, and, and other places on, 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 the, on the west coast of Africa? What mm -hmm what's happening there in the family. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, because many years later, um, researchers and other, other physicians started to debunk his theory, of course, and, and I think he fell away in disgrace because nobody was buying into this theory. But I just want you to understand that since 1851, way back when, there were people who were conceptualizing the African male and the African family in this way. So what has happened? What has happened since? And then we're going to talk a little about how we fix in this. Okay. I want to take a commercial break and get back oh, and sure. do that. But yes. when I want to touch this, I'm looking at something even as we speak, because there is, uh, like I tell you, I, I go back to where I got my foundation, right? And I'm hearing you, and this is f similar to me. This is this is familiar to me. When the children of Israelite had to be able to uh, move out of Egypt, and mm. they found themselves against tribulation, the first thing they would say because of this was that, hey, why don't we just, we might as well stay back in Egypt. At least we yes. would have been able to eat onions, right? The idea that exists in that, it continues to be able to follow us throughout the generations. And also yes. I want to be able to to look at this the Willie Lynch letter, right? Uh, this concept of Willie Lynch that existed that says that there are some principles that exist to keep a slave in place yes. existed from the 1700s. So I want to mm -hmm. talk about whether or not this drippatomia found, finds its base in the principle of the Winnie Lynch letter and being able uh -huh. to find out how we can be able to move forward beyond that. Guys, having a wonderful conversation, please be a part of it if you want to do it. But let's get the let's get the base out first before we do that. You know the numbers to call 323-6232-325-4316 or 325-4259 or you can just hit me up with a text 
4796. If you're listening from Grenada, the numbers are 1242 322 323 6232 or 1242 422 4796 for text. We're talking with uh, Dr. Panchu and we're having a wonderful conversation about the base of where we are to see how we can be able to fix this in our communities. Guys, stick and stay. We're going to take this quick commercial break and be right back after this. The fact. The fact. The fact. The, the foundation. With over 25 years in business, nothing says commitment to our people, culture, and service like Rev. And this year is no different. We will continue to elevate your home experience for you to create and share memories for years to come. While keeping you connected to the people and things you love most. Our pledge to provide quality service each year remains true. Rev is made for you. Whether your business is in store, on the go, or both, let Fidelity work with you to maximize your customers' payment options with a fixed or mobile terminal so that you never miss a sale. It's safer than cash and more convenient so that you can take your business anywhere. For details, contact a business development officer today at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport or visit our website at fidelitygroup.com. So we never skip ingredients, save some cash, and satisfy your cravings with our new carry-out medium two-topping pizza for only $12.50. That's right. Order two of your favorite toppings, like sausage and green peppers, on one medium pizza for only $12.50. Fat inclusive. On our app or online. Made daily with fresh dough, our signature sauce, and fresh cheese. Only at Marco's Pizza. Restrictions apply. At Ron's Electric Motors, they repair at and rewind all major brands of electric motors, including water pumps, generators, and generators back end, welding machines, electric lifts, air compressors, battery chargers, and more. They equip to handle up to 850 kilowatts and rewind up to 450 horsepower motors. They're conveniently located on the corner of Wolf and Clarence Roads and are open weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturdays till noon. They offer 24 hours emergency assistance. You can reach them at 242-356-02. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one -on -one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Guardian Radio and the Foundation are on the move. Bahamas, this one's for you. SBT. Small Business Thursdays. Every Thursday, the Foundation with Howard Grant will highlight small businesses throughout the country, far and wide. Your products, services, prices, and personality. We want to hear it all. 60-second advertisement heard on air at a fraction of the cost. We here at the Foundation understand the times and don't want you to be left behind. With Guardian Radio, you reach your specific demographic, and it is unmatched. We reach thousands daily. Get your products off the shelf and your services in their hearts. Small Business Thursdays with the Foundation only on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. For more information, call 302-2300 or the Help Me Howard line at 827-0111. SBT. Small Business Thursdays. Get your business moving today. This 
is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Foundation. Foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, Howard Grant, right here on 96.9 FM radio with the foundation, really chopping it down on this beautiful Lover's Day, right? I'm uh, not sure, you know, typical conversation for Lover's Day. We're not going to be talking about, about this kind of a love that you know, but the love of ourselves, the love of how do we find uh, and kind of reach deep within ourselves and pull out uh, what is needed for growth and development in our society? What is, in our society? What is needed for us to find a true sense of progression, and not just this superficial concept, but something deeper, richer that we can be able to build legacy and longevity on? Uh, I'm sitting with none other than um, uh, he's actually tuned in all the way from Grenada and really being able. He's an hour ahead of us, so um, uh, I'm really grateful that he's taken the time to do this, Doctor Augustine Panchu. Um, um, listen, he is wonderful if you've not uh, caught the top of the show you have to be able to listen back to the recording um, uh, and do that guardiantalkradio.com guardiantalkradio.com now doc when we left off we talked about um, this idea of uh, drippatomia right uh, mm -hmm. we talked about this idea and you talked about the idea of uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome right and yeah. the fact that there has been this genetic makeup the shift in our genetic makeup in our minds and our spirits rather of how we can be able to move forward now i wanted to kind of contrast that because if it's 1851 that we would have heard from dr cartwright being able to diagnose the black male with a mental illness what about the letters that came from uh, willie lynch uh, in the late 17 or the mid 1700s that actually gave sort of a layout of how slaves should act and how slave owners should be able to deal with slaves uh, in mm -hmm. terms of if their desire is to move away from the plantation. Talk to me about it. Yeah. I, so you see something, um, especially, and, and uh, you are referencing the Willie Lynch letter and, and in the making of, an, of a slave. You know, it's a study uh, that described the the rational and the results of of white ideas, really. You know, Anglo-Saxon ideas yeah, yeah. and methods of ensuring the master slash slave relationship. You know, um, how to protect it and how to deal with slave behavior and how to how to how to um, what so the brutality that we see. I think let let's be real with it, okay? And you allow me to be really absolutely. The, the, you know the brutality with which and the inhumanity with which the slave slavery took place under the guise of 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 bettering the life of the of the black man um, is is what we're dealing with still today. Let me read to you. A an in uh, a, a sort of little from Dr. Digori's discussion in her book. Right here is what she says. Just just a couple of lines I'll read. It says, "Innocent and angry little boys, threatened by a glance, proud parents reluctant to praise their children, and feeling the need to inhibit natural exploratory instincts, friends not being able to celebrate the successes of their peers." organizations torn asunder from within, parents feeling the need to protect their children from the police, issues of skin color and hair texture continuing to dominate discussions regarding beauty and physical appearance, the excessive focus on material accumulation, people needing, wanting, and dreaming, yet fearing that they will not succeed. Most of all, frustration, frustration and anger, at times even rage, feelings that seem to dominate many of our lives. Talking here, if you were to ask Howard, how many of us, I mean, I don't know if you have lived in the United States. I've lived in the United States. I have two young adult children, my wife and I, 
And, and I had to have the conversation with my son in particular about the police and about safety. Mm -hmm. I, and do you know do you know why I needed to have that conversation? Mm -hmm. I, I needed to have that conversation because even now presently, the, the when the black male sees someone in authority, he starts to get fearful. Mm -hmm. That anxiety that black males have, for authority is ingrained in our DNA. It's mm. not just because of Rodney King or, or a couple, you know, um, Trayvon Martin. Mm -hmm. it, it's not about that. George it's Floyd. about how, yeah. how, how slavery changed our DNA. The inhuman way of, of the Middle Passage and on the sugar estate and the cotton farm farms of America, how that has helped to change who we are. It's amazing. It's amazing. It is amazing. You know, and, and while I'm sitting here and I'm listening to these stories, I travel back with my mind. And, and whether it's something that I read, whether it's something that I watched, um, um, it's hard. And I, the only thing I can do is, while I know that we're still building the base, the only thing I can do is try to figure out within myself, how did this get trapped in us? Is this yes. being fed to us? Back to these things. Even children. I watched a, a clip on YouTube the other day. Uh, this little kid was driving. It had been a toddler, maybe two, three years old. You know, the little cars. And someone was playing like the police was behind him. He jumped out the car and started to run. Where yes. did this come from? Where yes. did, did we find this, this perpetual, relentless fear for a white man's authority? Despite our creativity, despite our strength, despite our innovation that exists within us, despite the history being told of what we would have done in terms of contribution to the modern world, we still carry this. Judges, yes. judges, lawyers, doctors, all with a darker hue, being behind a vehicle in the United States of America, and they see the red and blue lights, they say, oh my God, and yeah. everyone starts to sweat. Talk to me about where this came from. Okay. I wanted to write this down and maybe we will reference it. I think you and I will have a subsequent, maybe more than one uh, subsequent conversation in the future. All right. Um, uh, maybe I might consider moving to Bahamas. Well, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> that we can talk about, okay? okay. Let's talk about that. All but, right. but, but let me say this here. Let me say this here. I want you to to be able, as you as I introduce to you, Dr. Roy, um, uh, sorry, Dr. Joy um, Digori. I want to introduce you to another prominent person who has followed in the footsteps. Who is currently very young, uh, young woman, following in the footsteps of Dr. Digori. Her name is Dr. Monica Williams. Write that down and you will Google her and you will see the beauty in which she which she presents, you know? Mm -hmm. And and here's what she says. Racism, I'm answering your question, huh? Okay. <laughs> Racism power structures and institutions in our society. And white people are taught to propagate racism and not even see it. The process is maintained by pathological stereotypes and misinformation about black people. This is what she writes. So when you ask, where is the basis? Because, because you, you see where it comes from. No, it's so heavy. You, when, when she starts to talk about it's built into the structures, right? Yes, and it is built into the structures. You know, what's an amazing thing is, is that even through watching, you know, because we don't necessarily, especially us in the Caribbean, most of us, so many of us have majority blacks in our countries. Now watch me. When we find ourselves watching the television, whether it's yesteryear or something that's happening recently, and uh, that classic scene where a white woman walks past the elevator and somebody steps out and she clutches her pearls or she clutches her purse, that's built in. Automatically when the black person passes, she clutches her uh, and she holds herself closer. That's built in. And so my idea is, is while she's talking about that, about Monica Williams, 
that must be where this comes from. This built-in concept that says, yeah. watch yourself. Watch yourself for these black persons. Yeah. They're animals. They're this. They're that. How can now we retrieve our humanity? How can we yes. take it back? This idea that we one tenth or was it uh, uh, three fifths? Uh, was it was it five eight or three fifths uh, a human being? How do we, in this twenty first century, as we mm -hmm. continue to be able to move forward? And uh, Elon Musk and and Virgin Airline uh, Airwaves is trying to go off into uh, outer space and provide tourism out there. We're still here grappling with our humanity, grappling with our position. Um, so we're we're placed and and i hate to use it well hate might be a strong word i i sometimes refuse refuse to use the phrase um of helplessness um because it 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 speaks to one's inability to rise above or to or to be resilient or, or to exercise resiliency um uh, but but when you when you look at what is happening in society and the genetics it is we we have changed we the black black families the black male has changed from we're we're different to 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 our ancestors from mainland africa you know mm -hmm. we from those of us who have survived slavery and survived tutions, we are different conceptually from our brothers from mainland Africa, from where we are originated. And this is so because, because our genes, and so this is taking us now to present day and how we are gonna fix this thing because look at what we have before us, look at it critically. Um, there are certain things about the black male Howard you know, anxiety um, is is probably one of the 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 most prevalent of of mental health deficits mm. um, in in the, in the black family among males. Anxiety. No depression is for the black females, but more anxiety among black males. This is heavy. Um, what you're saying. Because oh my God, Doc, Go I got I, we got to Go take no no I want but I got to take <laughs> one more commercial break. This is for you, man. This is your show. I got to take one more commercial break because it takes me back to the foundation again. It takes me back yes. to the principles that we celebrate, that we embrace, that we move towards, and the principles in the Word of God that says, "Be anxious for nothing." Yes. Was that strategically for us? Did it speak to the black man? about the anxiety that we carried or the foresight, prophetic anxiety that we will carry, be anxious for nothing. But the truth is, on a day-to-day -day basis, we're anxious for everything. I want to know more about this. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to be part of the conversation. 96.9 FM radio. Please give me a call on the second half as we get into resolution, as we get into a path to find a progressive future. The number's here, 323-6232. 325-4316, The Foundation with Howard Grant. We're talking with Dr. Augustine Pancho. He's got to get ready to come to the Bahamas, man, because, he, hey, we're having good conversation. Doc, we're going to take this quick commercial break, listen for news, and be right back after this. Foundation. Foundation. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Fidelity, we're good for you. With so much going on in the world today, only accepting cash at your business can be risky. Let Fidelity offer you and your customers safety, convenience, and the flexibility of a fixed or mobile terminal on the move and on the go because business should never stop for more details speak to one of our business development officers at 356-7764 in nassau or 352-6676 in freeport visit our website at fidelitygroup.com or visit us at any of our branches ready to step into the future from your front door to the backyard and everywhere in between. 
See and speak to whoever's there with Ring Video doorbells and security cameras now available at Alive. Protect what matters most, all from one easy app. Available in your Google or Apple Play Store. Visit BeAlive.com slash Ring to learn more. We are Alive. Foundation. Foundation. The foundation. The foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, the foundation with Howard Grant. Uh, listen to me, this is a lover's day for you. Trust me. I mean, if you're out there, you're celebrating um, Valentine's. Happy Valentine's Day to you, but, um, you know, I wanted to get a little bit more intimate with you, right? I wanted to get a little bit deeper into the conversation rather than just being able to hit you with the pleasantries of of Happy Valentine's Day to this one and that one. A lot of our relationships, um, um, there is a sense of inconsistency. After you get through that kind of a first phase of uh, the love that you share, like, you know, I see, uh, you know, introduce myself to you. We find ourselves in a relationship and as you travel through this relationship, first year, second year, third year, you see that there is a consistent pattern of how you gauge the potential of a black man in comparison to what this black man is doing. And so the conversation that we're having today <clears throat> is really about how to get to the core of why. Why do we see these things? Now, if you're one of those persons to say, no, Howard, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm good. You know, I've, I've dealt with my issues. I don't have any issues. This is who we are. We accept these particular things. It doesn't negate the fact that we're dealing with some things socially. You may be the exception, but the rule is a great deal of us are broken. And today, we're recognizing through conversation with our very good friend all the way from Grenada, being able to zoom in with us, Dr. Augustine Pancho, and really being able to talk to us about the genetic makeup, modification to our genetic makeup, and the post-traumatic slave syndrome that exists. This idea of drippatomia, this idea that Dr. Cartwright would have talked to us about from 1851, though he was been sort of uh, rejected, as the doctor would tell us, there is an idea that exists in these particular spaces. Now, before we go further, I just wanted to kind of talk to you about one thing. You know that we talked about uh, our very good friend, um, Gerard Davil. And Gerard Davil, uh, today was the day that he should be able to talk about the blood drive. So it's Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Kevin Bethel Building at the University of the Bahamas. You can be able to register and check the information there. Is that this is uh, key, uh, uh, ken davil foundation.com. You can be able to fill out the information and find out more about that. Is the Kenise, Kenise, I'm sorry, Kenise Simonet Darvel Foundation. Find out more about that. And this is brought to you by Alpha, uh, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, uh, the Phi Mook chapter, really being able to do some stuff with that. I was hoping that he can come here and do some things, but I said, let me take the time and really be able to talk about this. You know she passed away, and so there's a blood drive for her. Please go and check that out. It's over at the University of the Bahamas, February 14th, which is today from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Please go and check that out. So, Doc, I want to thank you so much, for again, for being able to do this. I don't want to take much time for you because I want you to dive deeper into this and get back to that conversation that we're having about the inflection. We recognize that there is an issue. We recognize that um, um, a great deal of us suffer as a result of this, not just isolated to African-Americans, but Afro-Caribbeans and all mm -hmm. those of us who would have come from West Africa. So talk to us a little bit more about how we can rectify this. And that was one of the major things that you and I were talking about. Let's take this next half to talk about, we've recognized the issue, how do we fix it from here? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Howard, I, I, I recognize something about you in your conversation. So I want to reference this um, in a way that that is probably more songs than I would normally on other um, forum or, or other situations. But I noticed that you're referencing a lot about 
so maybe um you know spiritual things and and conceptual uh conceptually about god and and leading and man because i i i want to i want to reference this because mm -hmm. i will tell you this i am a man of of faith um and and so when i do psychological work i i have to reference a power that is greater bigger more powerful than than my psychological training and my my the the the, the accessing of my brain power i think there is some there is a power and i refer to it as god um, and unless uh, unless I tap into that, um, I cannot complete and successfully answer the question you're asking, how do we fix it? Mm -hmm. And I thank you for the permission to to reference that, okay? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, because because while I want to show you this, under normal circumstances, God has designed, our creator has designed the human body to defend itself. Okay, we're establishing that. Okay, mm -hmm. Howard? Right, okay. Um, our body can, can defend itself. There is a mechanism. It is called the HPA axis, right? H, capital H, capital uh, P, capital A, axis, A-X-I-S. And the HPA is really the hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenaline. Three organs of the adrenal system, sorry, of the endocrine system that takes care of us. Mm -hmm. So a dog comes at you, Howard, and immediately your hypothalamus sends a message to your pituitary gland, to the adrenal gland, prepare because there is a ferocious dog about to eat my wife or bite my child. Mm -hmm. So this is your pupils dilate, your heart races. And I'm not talking about seconds or minutes. Eh? Instantaneously, all of that happens. Mm -hmm. And then you get all, your body secretes, the adrenal gland secretes two really important hormones. I'm going slow now because this is the, this is, this is, class in biology and, and, and brain function right now. Mm -hmm. I follow it. Our adrenal gland produces adrenaline and cortisol. Mm -hmm. And those two chemicals are responsible for giving us the ability to defend itself. So we have enough adrenaline to run and run real fast. Mm -hmm. Or enough adrenaline and cortisol to stand up with the extra energy and face this ferocious dog. So we get strength from, uh, it seemed nowhere, but I could tell you what it is. It's from the adrenaline and the cortisol. And we are able to fight off that dog, that intruder that comes to your home, or that predator that's lurking in the bushes to take your child away. We get the energy and we can do it. That's how God, the creator, designed our body. So I want to go back now a little. Allow me, Howard, mm -hmm. to go back a little again to slavery. You remember the movie Roots? And if you haven't seen it, you better watch it. We watch it, <laughs> we watch it annually. <laughs> yeah. We cannot have this conversation and they know about it. We appreciate this conversation unless you have seen a version of Roots. We are familiar with that here in this country, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. See why I have to move to, to the Bahamas? Yes, yes. Um, so when you look at Roots, it didn't matter how much the slave owner tried to whip Toby into submission. Right? Mm -hmm. Kinta Kunte will stay forever. Okay? Mm -hmm. We couldn't get him to acquiesce to a name change. Mm -hmm. So here's what happened. When our black males, our foreparents, were chased by the whites 
to be captured and bound and put on the slave ship. Can you see how the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland and the adrenal system make them run faster? Mm -hmm. But then they devise the plan to, to, to bribe and other people, give them good stuff, shining objects. That's what history tells us. Shining objects give up their families and the strong men. But the maker, our creator, has designed the body to defend itself. So here is how we answer in the question, Howard. What happens when our bodies, currently, I'm talking present day, when our bodies produce adrenaline and cortisol, but we do not use it up? What happens when a police is following you and you see that blue light flashing behind you, which indicates that you must pull over? How? Let me tell you what's happening your Hypothalamus is sending a message to your pituitary gland that sends a message to the adrenal gland, produce cortisol, produce adrenaline, because we have a situation here we may need to run or we may need to fight. Fight or flight, right. Mm -hmm. Yes, you remember? Yes. That's it. The, the fight is phenomenal. Yes. That's where it comes from, you know, the HPA axis. The way the maker or creator designed the human body, everybody has it. But it is so pronounced in the genes of the males because of the history, the historiosity of trauma and humane treatment that we are more sensitive. That's what the research says. We are more sensitive to this kind of a trauma so that our body constantly, we, we live, Howard, and that's what I want to tell our listening audience. The black male, you're talking about his masculinity, he lives in a constant state of fear, which means that his body, his HPA axis continues to produce adrenaline and cortisol every time he hears a siren, every time he sees a police uniform, every time he sees a blue light, even though about him, it's about him. Mm. Ah, am I getting somewhere tonight? You're getting something, you're getting something. Right. Absolutely. And so guess what happens to the adrenaline mm -hmm. and the cortisol, Howard? I'm going to teach you a little biology today. Mm -hmm. The adrenaline and the cortisol, which are both neurotransmitters and chemicals that helps us to defend ourselves through fight or flight or freezing. When we run, we use it up. When you fight back, you use it up. But when you do not, when you sit in your car or you stay at home and you hear the siren and you start responding, your body starts responding, but it's not about you. All of the adrenaline and the cortisol are stored in our muscle and our organs. I'm going to say that again, Howard, for you to remember that Dr. Panchu said it. This adrenaline and the cortisol they are good for action, but they're bad for our health. And so if we run or if we fight, we use it up. But when we do not run or fight, it's, it is stored guns and in our muscles. And I tell you this, ask any health expert. They'll tell you that one of the, the disease of the black male or the black man is high blood pressure, hypertension, anxiety as a result, uh, heart disease, kidney disease. The adrenaline and the cortisol, when it is stored in our organs, it is toxic. I want to use the word and let you know what they are. And so how do we fix that? We fix it through a realization of who we are by going back to basic and understanding that we are created by a supreme God who always looks out for us. In the presence of the divine, 
the sorry, the pre, I want to say it better. The presence of the divine is probably the black man's best hope Ooh. for safety. Ooh. I'm going to say Hold it again. On. <laughs> Whoa. This, 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 this heavy, this deep. This, this deep. is deep. This is deep today. This I'm telling deep. you. Just before our show on CA Nui show. Yes. Right? We had uh, my good friends, Rastas, right? Mm -hmm. Who identifies a supremacy, but not the supremacy that the general population who as a Christian nation identifies. Right. right. So yeah. this is different. If you're in your country and other spaces in the world, there are uh, a lot of persons who would accept what you're saying uh, about yeah. the HPA access, accept what you're saying about the adrenaline and the, the cortisone, accept what you're saying about it being stored up in the muscles and the organs. But how do we dispel that? You're saying that the only way we can do that is with a realignment and an acknowledgement of supremacy. Watch me. That uh -huh. supremacy, if you're saying that comes from a divine space, is it only the supremacy of God or is it just the acknowledgement of spirituality above you? Talk to me about that. Both, Howard. So to quickly answer the question, both. Because, because there is an acknowledgement of something that is... So, so when you talk about spirituality in the sense, you're acknowledging that there is a power. When, when, you, when you look at Alcoholic Anonymous, right? You're the A and you'll study the handbook and you study addiction. They talk about addiction being a disease and the only way that they can overcome that disease is to, 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 to appreciate the existence and delve into the existence of a higher power. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is another principle. The principle in the word of God. Now, these people, people they can cuss me for this, Doc, right? <laughs> they, they, they do this. But this is a principle in the word of God. The principle yes. says, be ye transformed in your thinking. Thinking, in your mind. In yes. your mind. Your transformation doesn't come with just the acceptance of the, the divinity. The transformation right. comes with a changing of your mind. So mm -hmm. when you see the red lights and the blue lights and so forth and so on, you wouldn't react. Your yeah. HPA axis wouldn't kick off because you know that I'm covered. My God, Doc, you get heavy today. You get deep today quickly. I'm telling you, I'm getting deep because, because I understand. You know, I was preparing for this in the way that, because we didn't know each other until yesterday or Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, so I am thinking, how do I know? And then I went back and looked at a couple of your videos and I realized this man has a spiritual perspective about him. Wow. And you tell me about church and I said, okay, so even if don't, we don't need to emphasize the God factor, we need to emphasize the factor that takes us to a place, Howard, that is bigger, that is better, that is stronger, that is more powerful than, 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 than this amazing. mortal body that only exists for a for three score and 10 years, you know, we're, we, our minds start wandering and we lose cognitive uh, um, dexterity, you know, when we get to a certain age. Doc, this but is, there is a power. This is amazing. This is, this is an amazing conversation. I could not know that this is the direction that it was going to take. Let me see if I, I can didn't take, know that either. Let, let me see if I could take one telephone call because I know <laughs> these persons are eager to get it. Uh, we got a call on the line. Calling on the line with this live. Good afternoon. Yes, Howard. And the doctor, how you doing? I am doing fine, We're young good. man. Yes, sir. Um, you know, while living away, I, I heard um a I heard a a program, um I was listening to a program, it's the same thing. But I, I don't know if you guys ag agree with this. Um they said um why so many of our black men um act acted up sometime like that said the um the action of 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 um the treatment of slavery are uh, embedded in in our in our in our, in, in our veins. I, I don't know if wow. you know if that's good for you. Wow, thank you so much, my brother. I do appreciate your telephone call. He's saying the same thing that we are. The yes. trauma is locked into our DNA, right? Mm -hmm. And the only way that the next generation can shift this because I, I want to touch this dog. Uh, there's a, a lot of persons who may not necessarily agree with this, even coming onto the station and having a foundational belief, the, the show, 
by the name yeah. of the foundation being able to travel back to the inception or where we went awry and trying to be able mm -hmm. to get back on course, uh, a lot of persons are indifferent with it. And that's fine with me. Uh, yeah. But I'm grateful for the opportunity. But now, all the way from Grenada, having a conversation with me, you're saying to me, with all of your experience, exposure, very clear understanding with finding men back in their position, there needs to be an acknowledgement of supremacy to get to a higher place. But there are persons like the Rasters, like others in our community, um, uh, black uh, liberalists, that can be able to say, not this white Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can't yeah. push the white Jesus on me. Mm -hmm. Not this. That's just a clear conversation that they'll have. That, mm -hmm. that, and then they'll go back to, to the core and tell you that Christianity mimics, uh, you know, this concept and idea that existed on, this, on, the, on, the, on the walls of the pyramid in Egypt, yeah. right? They, they go back deep and just to be able to debunk the idea, even having conversation about the fact that the Bible never had, I mean, had J. It was only, so talk to me about that. Talk to me about if there is supremacy, if there is this God that needs, all of us need to acknowledge to be able to get to the harmony and productivity that our community and, and injecting the hope again, how do we do that with differing views on who this God is? I, that's a very, that, that's a tough question. Um, and I, I know you probably ask it purposefully. Um, the argument about who God is, for me, is not, not so significant as to acknowledge that there is the power that is bigger than me. I like that. I like so, that. Yeah, I accept that. That's I mean, you, how I put it. No, That's how I put it. You know, I can. You know, I have to accept that. I accept that because yes, um, yes. Um, um, Moses in his particular pursuit and being able mm -hmm. to find these things, Abraham in their pursuit, never identified a specific name. It was right. the I am that I am. It was it I was am. God. It was yeah. the God of the sea, yeah. the sun, the sky. It was the yeah. it was the supremacy that existed in the environment that we acknowledge. I accept that. Right, accept and, that. and 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 so for me, this is the. This is the angle from which I, I do treatment, the angle that I do psychological work. Because I want to, to I want to let you know, Howard, I think I am relatively smart. I have a lot of experience working with a challenging situation. But I see clients over and over and over again for the same thing. When when you think that they have conquered or when you think that they have their life together and you 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 end the therapeutic relationship, you see them coming back again. And sometimes coming back a little worse off, or sometimes differently worse, um, from what they first presented with, or the situation, or the organization. And and this has allowed me to develop a particular treatment that now involves the supremacy. Because I believe that the renewing, the, 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 the forgiving, the, the ability to love unconditionally, the agape, it's, 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 it's not of this life, it's of this life, but it is from the supreme. So it is not, it is not regular human thinking. It, it has to come from what I call the omnipotent, the omniscient kind of a perspective. And when I see that, watch this, Howard, this is what makes it exciting. When I treat people and I treat situations from that understanding, I allow people and give them the opportunity to embrace it also. And, and I find that when they do on their own timing and their own progression, when they do, I have better results. Mm. Mm. So you ask me, how do we fix the mail? Howard, we can't go back and 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 change the genetics. Because according to the words of, of, of Dr. Monica Williams, this thing is institutionally ingrained. 
away unless God do something as he did in the flood. You know, he wipes away all the generation that 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 perpetuate this kind of thing. But it's in the gene. And so my children and my grandchildren are going to be born with this alteration. Mm. And yes, your children, they're going to have offspring, Howard, that, that perpetuate the same genetic malfunctioning. Mm. And so the solution for them, the dehumanizing masculinity among black males especially, is a recognition of this supremacy oh and an appreciation for its existence in their lives. And when 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 our males, when we start to teach, so that's why you see, I'm going to come to Bahamas and we're going to do this thing, empowering men and doing parenting stuff with males so that we can, we can empower them back to their families. They have a change in perspective. That's how we this, that's how this. we reduce the anxiety levels and we reduce the 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 physiological the illnesses that is associated with the toxin produced by the adrenaline and the cortisol. That's how we that's how we that's how we have to do it. But the, the point is there are not many people out there who believe in that philosophy. People depend on the theories of Freud and Eric Erickson and, and, and Jean Piaget and Abraham Maslow because these these people give us psychological theories to fix people. But it hasn't worked for us for 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 it for isn't working. It hasn't it worked isn't working. For us, right? Especially if you're it talking about working. Maslow's theory uh, of self-actualization, being able to go through yes. the step. Uh, we as black men continue to take step one, step two, and go back to step one. Step. We continue to try to travel up this pyramid and never find ourselves at the pinnacle because why? The system is not structured for us to get beyond what a proverbial system, system. How, how you, you, uh, 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 ceiling. How are you the psychologist tonight? You're making it make sense. You're putting life to this theory. Oh That's God. why we spend 90% of our life, and if we live to be 85 or 90, we spend 80 of our years in the bottom rung trying to provide for the physiological need, food, clothing, and shelter. That's all we are consumed with, and we are going to die there. We never go up to step six or, or, or five or six. Never. Because we don't, if we look at it from a purely psychological purpose perspective we don't have the where it all to climb all these ladders and to reach there and the only way we can do that and i got to take this telephone call but the only way that we can do that yeah. is through unity there has yeah. to be a collective consensus yes. within not just the bahamas black community not just american black community it has to be a thread that runs through every diaspora of black communities globally that says it is now time for us to realign ourselves, understand our position, and take these steps together. Why? I often say that there's no such, I feel like it's an oxymoron to say that there's a Chinese entrepreneur. I know it's for, for me, it's oxymoronic. We is a communist country. We know about the regime that exists there, but we also know about the arms that exist and reach out far into the world. Where do these persons get the finance from to fuel their dreams in other person's land? It comes from a core. We don't have that. We don't have that here yeah. in the country. Does it come from Ghana for us? Can we reach out to, to um, uh, black banks in the United States of America to fuel some of our dreams and aspiration? So we back from step two, back to step one. And we are constantly in this struggle to survive. Doc, let me take this telephone call. Call you on the line with this live. Thank you so much for holding. Go ahead. Howard Grant, I hope you're going to pay for my time <laughs> because I'm on a cell phone. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fantastic, my brother. How are you? <laughs> I understand your guest is speaking some interesting things. Now, I don't know whether you are dealing with the preamble of the Constitution. I understand the things in the genes, that's understandable, but see, the God of the Holy Bible mm -hmm. is the God, the supremacy of God that is in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. That's what our mothers and fathers depended on, the written word of God. That's the inspired word of God. There are no errors in the Holy Scriptures. Now, also, this very same Constitution allows for others to have other 
views. Only in the Bahamas that can happen, you know. Mm -hmm. That can't happen in an Islamic country mm -hmm. or some of these dictatorial countries. And so you will have different philosophies from different people that are contrary to Scripture. Mm -hmm. They talk about a so-called white Jesus. And when you check the Scriptures, you see something totally different. But the point is, it has nothing to do with color. I keep hearing about this color thing, black people, white people, yellow people. That's physical. We need a spiritual transformation because the heart of man, as the scripture tells us, Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above, above all. all things and desperately wicked. The thing is, Jesus himself said, out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts. Mm -hmm. That comes straight from the devil. Mm -hmm. Now, he has ways and means of pitting black against white, Chinese against Americans, and all this other crap that you see going on. That is not of God, because mm -hmm. the Bible doesn't support that. Whether you are white or black, your heart is deceitful. That's the way we are, period. Now, the enemy comes and, and let us look at it, boy, you're a black man, that's a white man. The white man did this, the black person did that. But they have the same carnal nature. Now, that spirit of change has to be made. Mm -hmm. And so we need a different spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, which transforms, connects with our spirit, because there's a spirit in man. The Bible tells you that. But that Holy Spirit comes from God, connects with the spirit in man, it is non-physical, and that brings about that kind of change in the lives of people. And I know people are trying all these different things that, you know, others have come up with, but that is not real change at all. Mm. The change can only come through what God says, the Holy Spirit, connected to his spirit, his mind, his way, his way of looking at it. See, we're trying to advance in somebody else's thing, the, the Chinese thing, the American thing, the Jamaican thing, the British thing, God thing. You see what I'm saying, Howard? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's how it is. But I, I respect what the man is saying. See, I'm go against <laughs> the fact that he has a right to express his view, because that's yes. constitutional. I'm a strong believer in the Constitution. Yes. But the God of the Holy Bible is the God that the Constitution is referring to the supremacy of God. Not them other funny things. Thank you very much, Howard. Thank you so much. Guys, let's take a quick commercial break and be right back after this. We'll be back right after this. Whether your business is in store, on the go, or both, let Fidelity work with you to maximize your customers' payment options with a fixed or mobile terminal so that you never miss safer than cash and more convenient so that you can take your business anywhere. For details, contact a business development officer today at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport or visit our website at fidelitygroup.com. The Water and Sewage Corporation advises customers in New Providence and Village Road and surrounding areas that due to ongoing pipeline tie-ins into the water main, their water supply will be interrupted from Saturday, February 11, 2023 to Thursday, February 16, 2023 between the hours of 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. the following morning. The corporation apologizes for any inconvenience caused as they work to improve their level of service. Foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio. Howard granted your company the, with the foundation on this Lover's Day talking about how do we get back to the love? Where is the black eyed pizza? Where is the love? I'm so happy to really be able to, to chop this down today, and I'm grateful. I promise you, I am here. And I'm taking this in just as you are. I, I really am. And um, um, 
you know, sometimes we are led to these conversations. And I don't want to get mad spiritual with you, but my objective is to be able to bring a different type of conversation. Has this led to introspection? Has this led to you really being able to dive within yourself to understand that you're not broken? There are some things about you that you need to realign. Today we're talking about black masculinity. We're talking about our strength and how we can move forward. So before we go to uh, get out of here, you know, we need to get 20 minutes. I want to be able to bring back Doc, uh, um, Dr. Augustine Panchu, really being able to talk to us about, I, I got to call you Dr. Gus. I mean, because, you know, we we friends now, we family. I got I to gotta let you know this, Doc. I yes, want we you are, to know. We absolute we, family we now. We family now, yeah. okay, Doc? I, you, you Dr. Gus to me, right? We got to do this. Yeah. And I want you to know that, um, um, whatever we could do in the future, I got to let you know we got to do this because uh, this is a powerful conversation. Most times we don't see the marrying of the science with the faith. Most times there is this sort of a yeah. rejection mm -hmm. and separation, this, this gulf between the science and the faith, right? And science doesn't find itself mm -hmm. fusing. Yeah. But what you did today, I think, was an amazing thing. So I want you to take uh, this time out to talk to us. You started to talk about, uh, and, and you know, I break it to I bring it down to this concept of realignment, and uh, because it only could be re if we had an initial relationship prior. Yeah, and I believe that we organically, we from the inception of our being had a divine relationship, and this is where we found uh, our strength. This is where we found our glow, our position forward. And things changed as time progressed, like we talked about. So this realignment with divinity, this realignment with supremacy could find us being able to say, this is how we fix some of the trauma. This is how we fix uh, even, so what I'm hearing you say, even down to hypertension, even down to a lot of the diseases that we suffer from in the black community, can be alleviated when we structure ourselves to move away from the HPA axis and always being triggered by what's happening in our external environment. If we have peace internally, Manda, Doc, tell me if I'm on the right course because I, Man, I, I, I listen, I get deep absolutely. with you. Let you me know, know if I'm on the right listen, course. Listen to what he says. He says, my peace, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. Because the I give to you is the peace that passeth all understanding. You need to preach a sermon on that. I, I, I'm telling you. Is he a preacher? Because, because, I'm a preacher. <laughs> I know if you're a preacher, as the, the pastor for permission. Or <laughs> he probably will ask you yes to your wish because you're a talk show host. Right? So you think... <laughs> I'll ask him, I'll ask him, I'll ask him. Ask him, man, I'll ask him. But, but this, this, we're onto something, and I, this is not how I planned to end it. I plan to introduce the concept of realignment to the supremacy. There is no question, because I, I, I knew that you were going to ask me, Dr. P, how do we solve this thing? How do we take the, 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 the toxic masculinity, the, 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 the the inhuman way that the, were, were treated. How do we take that and make it make sense in present day and plan for our future generation? And I'll be amiss if I tell you that, you know, go to therapy more, maybe take some medication, mm. um, go to anger. Wait, 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 wait. How, let me tell you what, we will, what, what, what the normal psychologist will say, okay? Mm -hmm. Go to anger management for those, for those who... For the, the black male who find who is easily triggered and 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 become explosive, all right, mm. get anger a treatment. Um, maybe for the those who suffer from anxiety, um, we need to do deep breathing exercise and 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 uh, you know um, yoga and, and take on a hobby and come from one to 10 and 10 to one before you, you know, before you do what you're supposed to do. Um, or, or we may teach what is sensitization skills, you know, for people with anxiety and certain phobias. And, and we may teach children certain things and 
you know, when when we find our children can um, bond easily, you know, we look at attachment theory and we teach bonding skills and how to talk to your child from womb. You know, these are psychological concepts that are really rich and, and is embedded in research. And they're good because I learned them and I have applied them. But I say to you and our listeners, Howard, this, this afternoon, that unless we have an appreciation for the creator and the giver of life, and unless we embrace that power, we are going to continue in the cycle, healing and hurt again. Hurt, healing, and going back to the hurt again. Mm. We need to bridge the gap with the third piece of the triangle. And that is an appreciation and embracing of the divine. Mm. And when we embrace the divine, we have more power to fight because he says, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. Right? Wow. Doc, my burden is light. Doc, you... I, ahead, listen, Albert. listen, listen, listen to me. When I read your profile, I didn't see all this. I, I didn't see... I, no, you didn't I didn't see, see your faith. I couldn't see your faith. I I read it and no. I am... Um, one of the things in the email that I sent you is that I feel as though that you and I have uh, a, to the root of these things and deal with some stuff. Because that's one of the things that popped out to me when I was reading uh, yeah. most of your stuff uh, online. But I couldn't see your faith, but I knew that something yeah. stood out to me, even in your aura and your pictures. I said, oh, I think this guy has something to say. And your response, only in retrospect, can say to me, okay, I know why. Because there's only one spirit. Man, yeah. See, Doc, I don't, want, I don't want to get preachy with these people today. There's only one spirit. <laughs> And if there is yeah. a common objective, because my intentions are pure, uh, there's no gimmicks associated with it. There needs to be, yeah. there, there's, there's this idea that I have that says that I believe that, and I believe that Grenada has uh, suffered it because we're seeing this sort of an issue around the entire Caribbean. We had a, an article in the papers the other day, the Bahamas is eighth as it relates to homicides. And um, um, yeah. in the entire region, Latin America per capita. And we're looking at this and we're saying that there is an issue within the region. What's happening with who we are as a people throughout the region? And I just feel like it's a, it's a, a sense of hopelessness and lack of community. How do we get that back? And a lot of the conversations that I've had has been on that course. How do we get back? How do we reinstitute this sense of hope into the next generation and get back to the camaraderie and community that we know? And for you to be able to mm -hmm. come here and speak to uh, realigning ourselves with divinity and the acknowledgement of supremacy is an amazing thing. I must tell you, uh, this yeah. conversation needs to have a second, third, fourth, fifth part just to be able to get to, to the real core of it mm -hmm. and see if we can find resolution. Yeah. 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 I agree. I agree because because you know they're off. When you when you analyze the black male, there there are many there are many things about that piece that I have not, you know, we, we, we really don't have time in this segment to to go into and analyze and, and synthesize really. Um, um but but the black male his masculinity is 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 threatened and it has been so for example let me show you this what when we teach our children when we teach our children to fear strangers this is not how our community is set up. Our community is set up as a social structure where we give, we love, and we welcome. If it's the last slice of bread you have at home and someone passes and they're hungry, you will give it to them and you will fend for yourself because that's how, that's how, 
That's how life is. But when we when we are taught to hoard, when we are taught to be fearful of, when we are taught to be ashamed of, when we are taught to hide our skills, those things shape, reshape our lives and our perspective. We cannot be fulfilled. So Howard, tonight, this evening, I want to tell you in the final moments of our discussion, the black male is living an unfulfilled life. Mm. That's why he has to prove his masculinity. So on this day of loving, how does the black man or the black male prove his masculinity? Okay? The system is forcing him to what, give flowers, give chocolate, to wear red pants, go take his girlfriend out, or, you know, or significant other. That's tradition. Things and behaviors like these, Howard, this is how I want us to go, must come from a heart of unbridled and free. And if you allow the black man to love free and to give free, you're getting the best black man. You're getting the best, the best Caribbean father, the best Caribbean brother, the best Caribbean uncle, the best Caribbean mentor, the best Caribbean teacher. When it comes from a heart of freedom. But we can only get when we are linked to the omnipotent God. Mm. That power. Mm. Yeah, we, 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 we don't have it. We don't have the capacity to change our DNA. Well, Dr. Me, read That's a what Corinthians say. That is exactly what it says. Let me read a few of these texts here. Yes. Uh, a lot of persons have sent some texts in, and I just want to be able to take the time to do that. It says, oh, okay. Uh, Hello, Mr. Grant. Awesome show. Always. I watch numerous documentaries about Joy Degory. Uh, she is spot on. This is the information that's coming through. This is Howard. Uh, the black people catching their pearls too, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so these are some texts that's coming yeah. through, right? It says, uh, the so-called... And yeah, that is true. That's true. It is true, right? <laughs> So-called black yeah, people they taught us that. were deemed to be three-fifths of a human being missing our true nationality and divine creed that we had in Africa and the Americans before enslavement. History shows we crossed the Atlantic before the Vikings and Columbus. This is information that's coming through by the today, Howard. I'm a black female and I hold my belongings closer when I walk past black males that look a certain way also. Uh, it's not a white thing. It's how black males present themselves. Wow. Um, can we argue that that's also conditioning? Uh, there's a text here. Let me see if we can be able to read that in these last few minutes. It says, with all due respect, why are you misguiding the black people, Bayman people, Howard? It says, no one has ever found the location of the original copy of the Willie Lynch speech. And since writing the first two Willie Lynch essays, the man who claims to have created the first version of the fake Willie Lynch speech contacted this author to confess his actions. The forger wrote a confession letter to the authority to indicate that he fabricated the speech in 1979 and, at, and that he's willing but reluctantly admitted his actions uh, to me because I pointed the profile of the person who wrote the modern speech. All right, I just would pick this information up, and this is what history has been able to speak yeah. to us, right? So this is interesting show. Your guest speaks of the Bible, which calls us more than conquerors, in one sentence, and then cultural marquees, marquism, victimhood in the next. Also, how can slavery be engraved in the genes of us black but not as all races were enslaved for long periods of time. That's a question. You you want to uh, deal with that in, in a couple of seconds, or you want to be able to come back and do this sometime? We could come back and do this because 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 
it is not true about slavery and the and the and the Caucasian race. Mm. You, no, it's not true. Which, what, the Anglo-Saxon race is not true about 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 them being enslaved and the DNA. Um, you know. And, and, and there are some things, Howard, that we need to listen to also to ourselves. You may ask, why is it that that um, among black males, prostate cancer is is at a higher rate, much higher rate than Caucasians? That has to be the HPA axis. But you you understand what I'm trying to tell you? It is it is what is the generational the generational we inherit through the genes that makes it like that. Let me read a few more of these texts before we get out. It says the I am is the name and principle. Ane, ane re in the ancient Hebrew, right? And so it goes on. Let me see if we can read another text. It says, how can a blonde hair, blue-eyed person come out of that demographic? People need to know what they are looking at. And this goes back to colorism again. This yeah. goes back to, to, and that's what I said. The idea that exists in this culture is, is that how can this be the God for me of this mm -hmm. white man that history has painted to us and said that this is the direction. So, uh, Doc, we got to get deeper into, into those conversations. Let me see if I can take this Absolutely. quick. Absolutely. It says, hey, hey there, help me, Howard. I tuned in late, but uh, what I've ha heard so far is incredible. There is no true war between God and the creator and science. How could there be when the author of science is God himself? What becomes part of God and his power to a limited discoveries of sciences? I believe God over time and history allows evolving humanity to discover more and more about him and his creation through incremental revelations and discoveries as we call them. Who is mm -hmm. this doctor? Um, uh, Dr. Augustine Pancho. You can find him on LinkedIn, right? I'll spend the information and send it out for you. You can check my Facebook page, right? He says, who's this doctor and his name? Uh, painting a masterpiece, marrying the creator science and all of this wonderful creation. So that's the text today, Doc. I want to thank you. And please, uh, commit to the people that you're coming back again. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Howard, I am committing to the people that I will return. Uh, and Howard, you and I will have a conversation privately uh, uh, about coming to the Bahamas. Absolutely, man. But well, you know, it got to be reciprocal. I got to come to Grenada also. Let's just be yes, very clear. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That has been Dr. Augustine Pancho. He's a clinical psychologist. And even more than that, he really is being able to talk to us about faith, realignment, and being able to put ourselves to a great position. Doc, I want to thank you so very kindly. And ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for being able to tune in today. We're going to set up another round of conversations within this quarter so we can be able to make some things happen. This has been 96.9 FM Radio, Guardian Radio with Howard Grant, right here on The Foundation. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being able to tune in with us today. I see your telephone calls. I cannot get to that, but I thank you so very kindly. Doc, you have a beautiful day out there. Enjoy your lover's day. All you guys and gals out there, ensure that you enjoy your day. Please stick and stay for Shivago Lying with Z Live after this. Have a great day, guys. The foundation. The foundation.